What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsac, and we're doing write-up from Hack the Box, which is on the easier end of machines, at least when it comes to getting the user shell. The only thing you'd really have to do is identify the website was built with CMS Made Simple, which is just a open source content management system for PHP. You'd run search exploit against that, find the right exploit, and you'll get a salted MD5 hash. That same exploit that you ran can crack that MD5 hash. However, we will be using Hashcat because it's a bit faster and definitely more universal. Because if you're just using this Python script, you can only crack things that use CMS Made Simple, which I've honestly never seen before. If you learn how to do it with Hashcat, then you can crack any salted MD5 combination, which is awesome. We'll also be identifying a little few unused features in Hashcat, like specifying usernames in your hashes file. But after you get that password, you can log in with SSH. The privesk is a little bit more hidden. You're a member of the staff group and can write to user local bin and do kind of a path injection attack, but we'll get to that when we do. So let's just jump in. As always, we begin with the nmap so sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output in all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it write up, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.138. Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner is telling us it's a Debian box, and I don't know exactly how Debian versioning works. It says 10 plus Debian 9 update 6. I'm guessing this is Debian 10, which is a testing build, and the package comes out of the Debian 9 repository, if I had to guess. If you go to Firefox and just Google like Debian versions, you'll see they're all named off of Toy Story characters. And then the odd ones are stable, and then the even ones are testing, I believe. So we have Debian 9, uh, 10, that is testing, but yep, that's how Debian versioning works. So I'm guessing this is Debian 10, but the package is coming from the stretch repository, which is 9. So the next thing we see is HTTP on port 80. And it's Apache HTTPD version 2425, and also telling us that it's a Debian box. There's also a nmap script, the http-robots.txt, and it tells us there is one entry in it, which is slash write-up. So let's just go take a look at the web server. So going back over to Firefox, 10.10.10.138, 10, 10, and we just see a page that says there is some type of denial of service protection, so um, don't make a bunch of 40x errors. So I'm not going to do any dir busting or fuzzing or anything because chances are it's going to generate a lot of 40x errors and then I'd get banned and no one wants to get banned. We also see a note saying the page is handcrafted with VI and looking at the source code, it definitely looks like it is not automatically generated by like WordPress, Joomla or something like that. So let's go take a look at slash robots.txt. And then we do see there is a disallowed entry slash write up. So let's go take a look at what the box is telling search engines not to crawl. We see the home page. And then if we click on each of these links, we see it is a PHP script and the page is Y Puffy. So I'm going to assume this is working by like some type of include and there may be like a write up.php file. And if this was a very old version of PHP, you could just do null bytes and that would truncate the input. So what I mean by that is um, if the server was appending anything, you put a null byte and then anything the server appends just gets discarded because the null byte is a string terminator. So, but you generally won't see that anymore because it's been fixed for decades. So if we just go back to the home, uh, just looking around, we do see a note that says pages are handcrafted with Vim, not, so telling us they're not handcrafted. If we look at the source code as we normally do, looking to see if things are generated with like WordPress or Joomla or anything, we do see a meta name generator and the content is CMS made simple. We see the copyright is from 2019 so it kind of gives us an idea if it's up to date. We can do a search exploit on CMS Made Simple and we get a ton of versions. 
So instead of going through each of these individually, you could always start with the latest one first, but I always like seeing if there's a way to enumerate what version is installed on the server. So we can just Google CMS made symbol and see if we can download it. Looking over there, it did say it was an open source product. And then we have a download page. If you just do this install.script, uh, install.zip file, it's going to install like an archive and once you install the whole thing. Generally, the best way to search through source code, I find, is always going to the like repo, either Git or Subversion generally. We find the SVN link, and then here we go. We have a bunch of files that probably exist on the server. We can start testing them out by going to like slash admin. So if we do write up slash admin, we get an authentication required. We can do admin admin and we don't get in. So I'm gonna stop there because I don't wanna to create too many error requests. I'm also just gonna get out of this view source because I don't need it anymore. Oh crap, let's, there we go. Go to the next directory doc. And if we look inside a doc, it has a HT access authors change log, readme, HT access. Two files stick out. One is readme and the other is change log. So if we look at readme, doesn't have anything indicating the versions, but if we look at change log, we can see the latest version right at the top. So the latest version of this software is 2.2.12. And if we go to write up and go to slash doc slash change log dot text, we can see this is 2291. So let's go back in the search point directory or output and we see 2210. So most likely it's going to be vulnerable to this one because 229 is just before 10 and 229 is also greater than 213. So the only exploit it could potentially be is this one or maybe one of these down here, which uh, not that one, not that one. That looks like it's a module. So we'd have to have the Showtime 2 module installed on that. So I'm going to go with this exploit. So if we copy this, we can do searchploit dash x, and then start looking at it. Looking at this, we don't really see a blog post going by this exploit. There is a CVE number if you want to search. You may get more details out of it. You can also look at the source code. If we just go to the very bottom. We can look at what it's saying for a payload and just based upon this, I know it's SQL because this looks like a SQL injection thing. And then because they're doing some type of sleep, this is probably gonna be blind injection. And we'll take a look at this in a second, but let's just start running it. So we can do search ploit dash M to mirror it. And then I always like renaming it. So we'll just, use, just do like CMS made simple sql.py. The one thing I didn't do was look if there's Python two or three. I'm just going to search for a print statement, and we do see a space, so this is going to be Python 2. And if you haven't ran a lot of Python, you may have to install one of the modules that's not default, and that is term color. So if you get error messages when uh, running this, do pip install term color. I already have it on my machine, so it says requirement satisfied. If you don't, it'll install it. So. Let's do Python CMS made simple. And then we need to specify a URL. So HTTPS, or not HTTPS, HTTP 10, 10, 10, 131. And I believe that is it. So now we see it looks like it is trying. Uh, 138 is the IP, not 131, but it's going through the alphabet and thinks it has K. Uh, server closed connection. Did we just get banned? Unable to connect. I don't know why we'd get banned. That's mean. We can ping it. Just can't connect to it. I'm going to restart my VPN. I think we got banned. So I'm going to give it like 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll go and try running this again.
it's now been some period of time and I should be unblocked from the server. And what happened was I didn't put slash write up slash. So everything the script did generated a 404 error. And like the server says, it blocked me because I generated too many requests. So always make sure you put that slash write up slash or you will get banned. So here we go. It looks like it is trying it now and all looks good. We could edit the script to go through a proxy, but because it's just HTTP, let's just do something different and uh, Wireshark it. So let's open up Wireshark and then we will capture on ton, ton zero. Get a few HTTP requests, stop it, and let's see exactly how this works. So if you go to ipsec.rocks and search like SQL injection, you'll probably find a lot of videos that go over this. So if we also search for like time, oh, maybe we don't have time or a Boolean. This will probably be a good video to go to, but always check that site out if you need help on specific topics. We're just going to look at this one. Let's take a request and follow it and see exactly what it is doing. So it's doing a git on slash write up module interface dot PHP and then a scary looking uh, SQL statement. So if we copy this entire thing, let's go over to Firefox. Let's move this down, turn on burp suite, and then paste it in. Oh, my burp suite's not running. That could be problematic. Click it. Come on. Looking at this, it looks like it found the valid name, so it's trying to do um, email, it looks like. So close this, launch it. Once it loads, do this. And that's just a script I have that um, does all the sizing in all terminal windows. So run this. We can send this to repeater and start playing with it. So we want to look at the, oh, that is ugly. That's not what we want. This is what we want. We can clean that up. So copy this. Let's go to a different one. Paste, proxy, drop this request. This one looks better. We can close out of this. And let us highlight the whole thing. I'm going to do control shift U to un URL encode this. And we see the injection is within this parameter. And I'm guessing this is the expected thing, or maybe just one is. And then we do in select sleep one from CMS site prefs, where site pref value is like this. And site pref name is like this. And what it's probably doing is um, enumerating characters one at a time. Well, in this, it's probably doing two at a time because it is hex. So we can find out what value it was. So this was probably up here. So if we do man ASCII table, uh, man ASCII maybe, there we go. We can look at what five is because the very first character is five. So A, B, C, D, scroll down, where is five? Okay, 35. So going back to burp, 35 here. So up there, it was brute forcing the site pref value. The next one is 61. If you look here for 61, that is going to be a lowercase a up here. So all it's doing is essentially saying, hey, if the value is like three star or anything three, probably percent. But if it begins with actually three, five, because we want five. If the value begins with five, then do this sleep one. So what I'm going to do is simplify this by just removing all this. And we can say, this and I'm going to highlight 
press control U to Yodel encode it. And it's gonna sleep for one second. And now we know that was true. So if we do sleep five, it will sleep for five seconds. And how it was coded was just saying, hey, if this next statement is true, then sleep for five seconds. And anytime the server takes five seconds to respond, you know that was a correct value. So that's how that worked. Let's just move on and take what it found. So it found a password. So we can, whoops, quit that. We can do echo dash n, paste the password, wc dash c, 32 characters, safe to assume this is probably just gonna be a MD5 sum. We also have a salt for the password. So we can't just go to um, like hashes.org and crack this password probably because there is a salt. Uh, we should disable it. And essentially you can think of a salt as just prepending something to the password. So if your password is password and your salt is ipsec, then it puts ipsec password in the hash. It'll probably be better if I just type it out. So, whoops. We need to go hash, search, paste, u07vdf5, and it did not find it. So, if this was just a straight MD5 sum, it would do MD5 sum password like that. But with the salt, it does MD5 sum salt password. And if this salt is random, it's going to be pretty tough to crack the password with just standard word list, especially if this is like non-ASCII characters. So let's go back to that script and see if they had a method to crack. So dash H dash C. So crack passwords with word list. We probably should have uh, specified that at the very beginning. So we'll let the script run again. And I guess we'll come back when this is done. So I'll speed up the video. Actually, while this runs, let's just look at exactly how it's doing this salt. So let's do vim cms made simple, search for crack, crack password. So it's opening word list and literally just doing what I said. Salt plus line. Line is going to be a line in probably rock you. And so we can probably do this in Hashcat instead. So let's just open up a new window, go to the Kraken, which is just a box I have in my network. I never recommend doing any type of cracking in a VM. Always do it on your host or just on a separate box because VMs are slow. So let's go into the Hashcat directory, and then we will have to grab the salt and we'll also have to grab the um, password hash. So pw hash, and that is going to be, let's see, can I get it right here? And yep, so it failed, probably because it wants you to specify a directory. So let's save this, uh, no file name. We'll call this uh, write up info and then echo dash N WC dash C that's 33 characters. I wonder if it doesn't have that X definitely doesn't have that X if it's MD five sum cause that's not hex. There we go. Hex can only have a through F. So Let's go back into the write-up info and we'll just move this to be password info. We can cat that so it'll always stay at the bottom while we look into how to do this with Hashcat. The best place to always start is by running Hashcat and then doing dash dash example hashes and then piping that to less and this gives you a bunch of examples and then we can search for MD5 and go through the list. And this is type is MD5 and it's saying um, pass.salt. So we don't want that one. This next result is MD5 and it's salt.pass. So this is the one we want because if we looked at the code, it was doing the salt and then the line which was the password. So 
It's not putting a literal period in this. This is just how they concatenate these two variables. So we're going to use mode 20, and then the format is the hash and then the salt. I know this is the hash because this is more likely to be 32 characters than this is. I can probably eyeball this being a bigger thing. and Or I can eyeball this definitely not being 32 characters. That's what I wanted to say. So let's go into a word list directory or hashes directory. And we'll call this um, CMS made simple. And then put the password and then colon the hash. So paste that, colon, hash, or paste the hash, colon the salt. And that's what I want to say. Hashcat dash mode 20, the hash file. So this will be hashes, CMS made simple. And then the word list, I'm just going to use rock you. So we'll start this off and see if we get a crack. And we did. So we see it up here. And then the other good thing with Hashcat is you can do dash dash show. And this becomes incredibly useful because if we go into this, um, let's just move hashcat.pot file to hashcat.pot file dot not showing you because I don't know what passwords are in there. So I don't want to do that. Let's go back to that hashes. So if we go hashes, and then what was it? Um, CMS made simple. We can put a username. So if we knew this was, please subscribe, if that was the username, and then do that same hashcat syntax and say dash dash username, it's always gonna take that very first separate uh, field separated by a colon and have that as the username which is going to come in extremely handy when doing that dash dash show. So if you give it a bunch of like Active Directory hashes, then when you do show, and you can't do that with a dictionary list, you just want the hashes file or not. Um, let's do dot slash hashcat help grep dash i user dash dash username. I thought that would do it. Let's put dash dash username ahead. All hashes in pot file. Oh, it wants username. Yeah. So it doesn't actually put the username in the pot file. It's just taking the username out of this and doing the said for you. So you have the username, the hash you gave it, and then the password. So this becomes extremely handy when cracking a ton of things to do that username flag. But we have a password, RayKJ9. And if we went all the way back here to the box, we see a potential username, JKR, and then the password was RayKJ9. So let's make sure that's on our clipboard. We can try going to slash admin and seeing if we can log in. So jkr, paste the password, we can't get in. We can do jkr at writeup.htb and see if we get in. And we do not. So we can also try ssh. So ssh jkr at 10.10.10.138. Put in the password, and we get in. I just had copied it wrong, because I had shift insert and control shift insert. Two different copies, or a paste. So being on the box, we should probably run like linanum or something. So I'm gonna make a directory dub dub dub, and then we're going to cp opt linanum, linanum.sh to this directory. And the only change I probably made to this is I put thorough equals one at the top. So it's always thorough checks. So I don't know why I just closed that window. So we can do Python dash M simple HTTP server, just up a web server. And then 
just go to dev shm and probably curl 10 10 10 for 10 10 14 3 make sure this is our ip if config ton zero it is port 8000 lin anum.sh curl not found we can probably w get it yes we can so then we just execute it with bash lin anum and let this run while it goes i guess we can just go to the top whoops oh it's already done so let's go to the top and see what we have so i'm just going to search for bracket dash bracket and we can just hit n as we go so we see this is debian we knew that already specific release information uh name devon i don't know host names right up user and group info one of the odd groups is staff this is a special group see if this will highlight it i'm not sure if it does who else is logged in uh contents of etsy past wd permissions on home directory lacks doesn't look like it uh, files owned by this user or lin anum world readable files so doesn't look too interesting i'm just getting down to um probably the set uid bit files our history doesn't really show any host so we know there's no like um dock and containers on this box listening ports it's got mysql so we probably should look at the um mysql uh config and get a password out of that let's see init system d dub 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 set uid files and we see everything looks default set gid files everything looks default and it's gonna probably be it so there were two things we saw number one we're in a staff group which is unique and number two we have mysql um i personally probably would just start with the staff group because i know what that group does but on most boxes you would probably want to start with like enumerating that mysql thing so let's go to var dub 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 html and then go into that write up directory and we can't so maybe enumerating mysql is not what we're supposed to do here we can try like mysql uh and we can't access mysql so maybe I was hoping maybe like our user could access the database, but we can't. If we do lsla, we see only www data can get into this write up folder. So let's go look at what the staff group does. So staff group, we can search for Debian. We get system groups. And if we search for staff, it allows the user to make local modifications to the system, use a local without needing root privileges. And I bet if we had paid attention to linanum output more, um, slash user local, cron tab, I thought it would tell us that we could modify this. Maybe not. But we can modify files in user local. And that becomes a huge thing because if we echo path, user local bin is right at the beginning so if we can place a file in this directory then any time a file is referenced that's not in this it will get executed so take like um let's look at what's in bin so bin bash is there so if you had a file in user local bin called bash when you type bash at a command prompt that file would get executed if you typed um bin bash it wouldn't get executed because you're doing an absolute path so that path injection only works with relative paths but we should be good to go uh, a good thing to do to find vulnerable things you have to find someone executing a program without using a relative path so i'm going to download ps spy or p spy process spy and this was created by a hack the box user we can go to the releases and then just download it there. You could also 
um, just do go build so we can do both. We'll download it and compile it. So if you have Golang installed, that is apt install Golang, and we should be doing this from our box, um, then you can run these commands. So let's go into opt git clone, paste this in, cd piece by, we do go build, uh, we can't get the package, so we do go git, and then get this package, and that's going to go install that, and it installs it in your home directory slash go, slash source, and that's how uh, we do package management with go. But anyways, now that we have that package, we just do go build, and then it builds us a binary. So we do file ps by, and we see that is a 64-bit elf executable. So we can just copy piece by to root HTTP boxes. Um, what is it? Write up dub dub dub, and then go into dev shm w get 10 10 14 3 port 8000 ps by and then chmod plus x on this dot slash ps by pspy we get permission denied if i look at mount let's grab for shm we see uh the no exec flag is on dev shm so we can't just put binaries and execute it. It worked with linanum because linanum, we don't even have less, that's annoying. Linanum will call bin bash to execute it. So we're not executing linanum directly out of dev gem. It gets executed out of bin because that's what we're calling bash to execute it. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's just move this to like slash temp. We should be able to execute it here. So piece by, and then just look for processes. And the um, process we're looking for will probably run, if we cat Etsy cron tab, one of the things that runs is, oh, that's a full path. If you wait long enough, you'll probably see a process that doesn't have a full path. Like user sbin r syslog d, that's a full path or absolute path, so we can't hijack that one. However, upon logging in, it will do something that, a call that doesn't do a full path. So let's do another SSH connection, SSH JKR at 10.10.10, 10, 10, uh, 138. Paste the password, and we can see it's executing run dash parts, but not specifying the full path. If we do a which run dash parts, we see that is in slash bin. And you can also see the commands I had ran there. But since it's in slash bin and we can write to use a local bin and use a local bin is before bin, we should be able to hijack this. So if we do cd user local bin, name or file, what was it, run dash parts, and let's just do vi and then call it bin bash. We can touch temp, please subscribe. So that's going to create a file and that tells us that the script ran. And then we can also, let's make dir um, home directory slash dot SSH. And then we will echo, let's generate a SSH key. So let's go back to HTTP boxes right up. And we can do SSH dash key gen dash F, and we can call this um, right up. And this is just going to generate us an SSH key for a public SSH key login thing. So if we cat write up, this is our private key. We cat write up dot pub. That is the public key that goes onto the box you want to SSH into. So I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard with xclip dash selection primary. And then now if I just paste, it's on my clipboard. Handy little program. So echo 
paste. And then we will direct that to .ssh, authorized keys. And then I'm just going to chmod 600, ssh, authorized keys. chmod plus x, run dash parts. And we can go to slash temp, watch dash n, one, ls dash la. So every one second, it's going to um, list the output of that directory. So let's grab this password again. SSH JKR at 10.10.10.138. 10, 10, 10, 1, oh, Paste the password. And we see it created a file called please subscribe. Zero bytes long. It is owned by root. So now root should probably have our SSH key. So if we do a chmod 600 on our private key, we now can do sh-i right up, then 10, 10, 10, 138. We could specify root, but we probably don't have to because we are already the root user. And it always defaults to the same username as what you're logged into if you don't specify. But specifying this, we get logged right in, and we can do wc-c root.txt, 33 characters, which is 32 and a line break. 32 is, of course, the MD5 sum, so that is the flag. Hope you guys enjoyed the box. Take care, and I will see you all next week.